of the glory of God to manifest here. We're calling for the power and the fire of God on the altar. For the weight of the glory of God. Yes, we're calling for the power and the fire of God. Sing it again, say we wait for the weight of the glory of God. We're calling for the power and the fire of God. And great evening, great evening, blessings, blessings. If you can hear me, respond back. Great evening, Sister Tona. Great evening, great evening, great evening. I can't see who's on. I can't wait a minute. You know, I gotta go on my phone. Great evening, Elder Kim. Great evening, Renita. Day three, let's give it up for day three. We give God all the glory and honor that belongs to him. Great evening, Kira. Great evening, Shelly. Great evening, Betty. Great evening, blessings upon blessings upon blessings to you all tonight. Great evening, great evening. We come to give God some praise on this line once again. At the 10 o'clock hour, at the 10 o'clock hour, Father, we thank you for being victorious. We thank you for being King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. On this night, we call on Jehovah Yahweh. You are our strength and our song in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you right now for keeping us in the midst of everything we went through today. We thank you. Oh, God, for being a keeper of the whole entire world. You, God, are great. You, God, are mighty. You are the God of I, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And for that, we give you glory and we give you honor tonight. You are the mighty one. You are the strong one. You are a God that never switches up. You are a God that never sleeps and never slumbers. And for that, we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, oh God, for being a redeemer of ages past in the mighty name of Jesus. You are the light. You, God, give us strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for tonight, God. We thank you for your Holy Ghost power that's going to fall on this line tonight. Father, we declare and decree that the blood of Jesus has formed a head fit of protection around us, around our family, and around our homes tonight. We thank you because you are our provider in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now that the blood of Jesus hides all of us in the mighty name of Jesus from every demonic principality, uh, making it difficult even for them to effectively track or trace us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now for delivering us, delivering our family from every curse word, every vex, every spell, every sorcery with every witchcraft that was trying to attach itself to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you that every bloodline generational curse is broken tonight. Oh Father, we declare and decree that every negative word that was spoken against our family has been dismissed and been dismantled. Oh God, we break the power of kingdom of darkness and we cancel the prior idea that has tried to establish itself against your plans for our lives, our family lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, for saving us. You are a God that continues to save. You are a God that continues to protect. And for that, we give you glory tonight and we give you honor tonight. God, we thank you for loving us when we did not love ourselves, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you for saving us, God. We want to say thank you for keeping us. We want to say thank you for protecting us. We want to say thank you for hiding us from our enemies, God. We thank you right now for keeping our mind stayed on you. We thank you, oh God, even when we messed up, you still loved us. And for that, we give you glory and we give you honor. You are a God of strength. And so we thank you tonight. We're pulling on your strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you for being our defender. Oh, God, we thank you. You go and make every crooked place straight in the mighty name of Jesus. For that, God, we 
we give you honor tonight. We bless your holy, holy, wonderful name. We love you, God, for being who you are in our lives. And so we thank you and we praise you in advance for what's going to take place on this line. I pray that we all have a heart and a mind to receive what the woman of God is going to bring forth tonight with power, with excitement, with correction, with love, with discipline. In the mighty name of Jesus, that someone hearts and minds will be renewed. Oh God, because you are a God that never switches up. You are a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And for that, we give you glory and we give you honor today. We thank you, oh God, for letting us make it through the day when all obstacles tried to come up our way, but we were still able to push past because you are, you go before us, God, and you make every crooked place straight. And for that, we give you honor and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how we do. Let's take and let's share. Let's tag and let's share. Let's tag and let's share. Don't hold it all to yourself. Don't be selfish. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to know that God is a keeper. He's a lover. He's a protector. He didn't forget about them. He's a forgiving God. He's an all-knowing God. He's a God that never leaves. He will never leave you or forsake you. He's a God that never switches up when people want to switch up. He's a God that never changes. He changes not, and for that, we give him glory and we give him honor. Amen, amen, amen. I pray that the fire and the zeal and the excitement is in your home, is staring up in your belly because the woman of God is going to come forth. And I pray that you all are in a posture, in a position, ready to receive everything that God has for you through this woman of God. You will not see her, but you will see the God that's working in her, the God that's living in her, the God she lives and that she breathes. And for that, we give her, we give you glory. Glory, God, and we give you honor. I need y'all to share. I need you to share. I need you to share. God is doing something new. He's doing a new thing. He's doing something new. He's bringing forth. He's doing something new. And we thank him for everything, not some things, but everything that he is doing new in the name of Jesus. So without any more coming out of my mouth, I'm going to bring my own very, oh, she is. She is a woman of God. I love her from the inside out. I love her. She's shining right now. Y'all see this beauty? That's how it is. That's what you see is what you're going to get. And I thank God for Lady C. I thank God for Lady C for coming forth tonight. I need y'all to give it up. Give God some praise for Lady C. Let's give God some praise for Lady C. Welcome Lady C on this line tonight. God is going to use this woman. She's going to, he's going to use her in an unorthodox way. So be ready. We ain't coming with religion, but she coming all about relationship. She come to let you know that it is so. If God said it, it's going to happen. Come on, let's give some God some praise for Lady C. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great evening to everyone. As Lady Felicia says, great evening, great evening, great evening. It is such an honor and a blessing to be able to come onto this platform this evening and share what God has given me by way of uh, Lady Felicia welcoming me into this place. So God, I just thank you. I'm going to pray real quick. God, I thank you for, for using me for your glory on tonight. God, I come to you humbly asking that you fill me with your spirit in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you prepare the hearts of your people, God, to receive what you will have them to receive on tonight. God, I thank you to set the ear for your voice and only your voice to set aside my fears, to set aside my my uh doubts, but God, to just move by your spirit on tonight, God, have your people to hear what you want them to hear, have me to speak what you want me to speak in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you for these things and we count it all done in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Amen. If y'all could just pray for me, I am so humbled to be amongst these great women. There was two powerful women before me and two coming after, and I think I'm the rookie of the group. Amen. So I just need y'all to keep praying for me as I go forth and do what God has called me to do. I tried to get out of it. I'm not going to lie to you. I tried. 
I came up <laughs> with every excuse, at least in my mind I did, but I knew Lady Felicia wasn't having it. So I'm grateful that she saw something in me and allowed me to come forth today. But this thing, listen, I'm going to try to get through this without crying because I've never seen myself worthy of this type of assignment. But I'm so grateful to God that God has changed me and he wants to do the same thing for everybody in, in this live tonight. So he does have a word. There is a word. And I've learned some things. I picked up some things along the way. I, I, I'm standing next to a great man of God, not physically, but my husband, Pastor Jason. I think I saw his name somewhere. So I'm, I've, I've been in great company and learning. And I'm grateful that God has a word in me. And he is allowing me to use it. So pray for me. Please pray. Pray, pray, pray. So the topic of today uh, that Lady Felicia had given me, she texted me. So she called me and said, um, Lady C, I need you to participate in this event. It's all things new is the theme. Five day prayer pusher. We're going to bombard heaven at 10 o'clock. That was the first flag. 10 o'clock, I'm usually asleep <laughs> or laying out somewhere resting for the day. But God had had this time set for a reason. So I believe this was ordained by God. But she said, I need you to come on and just pray. I heard her say four to five minutes. So I said, I think I can handle four to five minutes. I, I, I accepted. I said, I'll go forth. And I got this beautiful text laying out everything that she would desire for me to do. And it said 45 minutes and all my anxiety kicked in. <laughs> everything kicked in like, oh God, what am I say for 45 minutes? So I asked her, what will you have me to speak about? You know, what is the thing? What do you want me to talk about? And she said, forgiveness. And that was like a blow to my chest because forgiveness is something that in the past I've struggled with greatly. Um, forgiveness was never a part of my life. Forgiveness was not something I subscribed to. Forgiveness, it wasn't me and forgiveness, it was me and fight. I wanted to fight, not forgive. I was the violent one. If somebody did me wrong, my goal was to revenge all the way. If there was no forgiveness in sight. So this was something that checked my spirit. I'm grateful for it. But there is a word, and I will not be before you long. I've heard some great preachers say that I feel like it fits. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to talk about what forgiveness is um, from the father. First, I want to share with you what God has given me. And this is mostly information that we know, but somebody needs to hear it on tonight. Amen. Right. So we're just going to go in. And if y'all can write in the comments, I some praying hands. I need to know you're praying for me. I feel the prayers, but y'all just put up some praying hands and some anything to help me go forth. Amen. All right. So starting with forgiveness, forgiveness, when it comes to the father in us, it is the letting go of sin, point blank, period. Mankind was born into sin, right? We know that. We know that mankind was born into sin and that sin has separated us from relationship with God, right? So what did our father do in his loving wisdom, in his uh, great love for us? He devised a way to redeem us of that sin, which allowed us to accept the forgiveness. He sent his son, made his son the ultimate sacrifice, shed his blood for the redemption of our sins. Our sins. Jesus paid a debt that we could not afford to pay. If we tried to pay, we'd be bankrupt. There's no way we could afford to pay the debt of our sin. The wages of our debt was death. We couldn't afford to pay it. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he came in and he went to the cross and he shed his blood. He died on the cross for our sins. And from that death, we've been able to have relationship with God because God has expressed his forgiving heart for us. Amen. So throughout the Bible, there's tons of stories. There's tons of accounts of forgiveness, a lot of which we already know. Um, for example, Joseph and his three brothers, we know that his three brothers sold him into slavery, sold Joseph into slavery. And then we know that the tables got turned and that those three brothers had to then come before Joseph and beg for his help. And we've, we've seen how Joseph 
Amen. How Joseph showed compassion on his brothers and how he didn't use his right to grab them and throw them into slavery or take the time to show revenge on them or or hurt them the way that he hurt them the way that they hurt him. He didn't do that. He showed compassion. He forgave them and he gave them their request, but they were seeking help. He went forth. He, he said, revenge is not my portion, but I forgive. The prodigal son, he took his inheritance and he left home against his father's wishes, against his father's report. He said, I'm going to do my thing. He left. He messed up. He did all kinds of things that separated him from God, separated him from his family, from his loved ones. And then what had to happen? He had to turn around and go back because he did everything that he did and was lost and left by himself, lonely, broken, broke. He had nothing. So he had to return back to his father. His father accepted him. He didn't turn him away. He could have, but he didn't turn him away. He opened his arms to his son and received him back. And then he put him back in place as if he never left. So, so many accounts of the father's forgiveness and how we should forgive throughout this walk. Now, I personally have experienced a lot of things throughout my life um, from as a child all the way up to now that the enemy would have would have designed to rob me of my peace, to rob me of my joy. Some of you have experienced things. Um, and I'm I'm gonna be real transparent. So bear with me. I might get a tear or two, but I'm just gonna share. Amen. Go ahead. As a child being molested, as a teenager being raped, as a, a young woman being talked about and telling that you you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, being a wife, not feeling adequate, being a a a, a child of God, but not really feeling like a child of God. Just being anything that I could have been, but that was not a uh, it was not what God had designed for me to be. I had to learn to forgive. I had to learn to forgive those who hurt me. I had to learn to forgive those who meant me no good. So what does that forgiveness look like? So in the natural, we know what forgiveness looks like from the father to us. Right. But in the natural. Forgiveness is basically us voluntarily and intentionally allowing God to take over a situation that we can't do anything with. We are allowing God to process the hurt and the pain so that we can no longer that we no longer have to be bound by it. Amen. Those who have victimized us, those who have hurt us and talk bad about us, who lied on us, who cheated on us. We have decided, and in forgiveness, we've decided that we will no longer be bound by resentment, by vengeance, by uh, trying to, to manipulate the situation to make them feel as bad as they've made you feel. That is, is not of God, and we thank God that we have a, a right to forgiveness. Amen. So I'm going to read this and talk a little bit more about it. Forgiveness is the natural sense. Forgiveness in its natural sense, I'm sorry, is the intentional and voluntary process by which the one who has been victimized undergoes a change in their feelings, overcomes negative emotions such as resentment, vengeance, and whatever else you can think of, any way you can get back at somebody. It does not mean, now forgiveness does not mean that you're not holding people accountable for the actions that they've taken against you. It does not mean that we're going to be a doormat. It does not mean that, you know, we have to stay in fellowship with these people. It doesn't mean that we're weak. It's not an indication of weakness. It's an indication of strength. It takes strong people to be able to forgive someone who has hurt you, who has intentionally hurt you, who has hurt you and not even known it. It takes strength to do that. It's not for the weak. The weak can't handle forgiveness. So I thank God that 
He is strengthening people on tonight. So I, I, I hear the Lord saying that there are some people that were laying in their bed tonight. It's late. So most of us were resting, kind of digressing down, you know, coming down from our day. But somebody was laying in their bed wondering, why, Lord, why me? Somebody was laying in their bed wondering how they were going to get through the next moment. Somebody is laying in their bed crying out to God like, why, Lord, I can't handle this. I don't understand it. God is saying that he is here for the weak. He is here for the sorry. He is here for the hurt, for the broken. He is saying that he wants to heal those broken places. He is saying that he wants to manifest the peace of God in your life. He is saying that he wants to strengthen those places that you have fallen short. He is saying that, God, I'm here for you. I'm on the sidelines. Tag me in. He is showing me a wrestling, uh, a wrestling match, a wrestling ring. And he is saying, uh, we're walking this thing out together. You're in the ring by yourself, but I'm on the sidelines. He is saying, reach out to me, daughter. Reach out to me, son. Tag me in. We're trying to fight this fight by ourselves. We're trying to manage this pain by ourselves. We can't handle it. We can't do it alone. The, the enemy has us on the ropes. He has us pent down. He DDT'd us. He body slammed us. And God is standing up. He's standing on the first rope. He's like, come on, fight. We're, we're losing the fight. It feels like we're losing the fight. It feels like we're defeated. He climbs up to the next rope. He's saying, come on, daughter. Come on, son. Fight. We're trying to fight. We're trying to defeat this enemy. But we haven't realized that we don't have to. There is a God that is here to fight our battles. He wants to turn us to turn these things over to him. Amen. So he's up on the next rope. And now he's reaching his hand out. He's saying, all you got to do is tag me in. Hallelujah. Somebody say, reach 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 all we have to do is reach and tag him in he is saying all i need you to do is extend your hand all i need you to do is extend your forgiveness if you make it a purpose in your heart and a purpose in your mind that i'm no longer going to carry the burdens that people have put on me i'm no longer going to be subject to these negative thoughts I'm no longer going to be subject to the pain that people have caused. I'm no longer going to be bound by the chains of unforgiveness. He's saying, reach daughter, reach son, tag me in. Once we reach out to him and once we allow him to come into this place, to come into this heart, to come into this mind, he can take our pain and push it into our purpose. Somebody say, take my pain I and got push it. me to my purpose. He said, no longer will you be bound by the enemy and trying to deter you from what I have for you. God wants us to experience the best he has for us. He is saying, take this pain and allow me to push you to your purpose. Somebody say, push me into my purpose. My pain has not been for nothing. I'm no longer going to allow the enemy to, to keep me bound. Amen. I'm going to release yes. all that I can unto the father because he can carry it. He can carry the weight. I don't have to carry it alone. You don't have to carry it alone. I see you, Karen, say, take my pain. Take the pain for Karen, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you. I thank you. Come on, push us past our purpose. I said, take the pain, Jesus. You don't have to carry any of these things. We are going to ask God to continue to move by his spirit. God, help us to forgive. Give us a forgiving heart in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you. He gave me four four uh, steps to forgiveness. And I'm going to give them to you real quick. He said, the first thing we want to do is uncover, uncovering, confronting our pain, confronting those areas that have tried to, to deter us from God, acknowledging those things that have hurt us, making sure that we're not walking around mad and angry and bitter, and we don't even know why. So we need to identify that place of pain identify those people that have hurt us. It doesn't mean we're going to go to that person and say, you hurt me, but we're identifying and confessing to God, Lord, this is my place of pain. Lord, I felt revenge. I felt uh, rejected. God, I felt like I wasn't good enough. God, my mother and my father wasn't there. God, my husband or my wife wasn't there. 
God, I need you to comfort me. I, I don't feel worthy. But God is saying, confront that pain, confront and acknowledge. First step, that's uncovering, confronting and acknowledging your pain. The second step is making a decision to choose to forgive. So the first step is, 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 is I, I know this is what I need. I'm hurt. Lord, this is why I'm hurt. And now my second step is, but I'm deciding to no longer carry this pain. Amen. Ah, I'm deciding to no longer have this pain keep me up at night. I'm deciding that I'm no longer going to be burdened with the things that I cannot change, the things of the past. I'm deciding that moving forward in Jesus is my portion. I will no longer be subject to the pain that people have caused because nine times out of 10, they're sleeping at night. Nine times out of 10, they don't care what they did. Nine times out of 10, they're not worried about you. So why am I giving my peace and my joy to Come someone who ain't giving me anything? So I'm going to give it to somebody who can do something with it. Amen? Yes. The second step is the decision. We've decided to give that peace or give that unforgiveness or that pain, I'm sorry, over to Jesus. The third thing is the work. We got to do work. The Bible says faith without work is dead. So I'm going to speak life into this thing. It's not going to die. I'm going to speak life into the thing that I want to die. I want uh, unforgiveness to die. I want the negative words to die. I want life into my joy. I want to speak life into my peace. I want restoration in my family. I want restoration in my marriage. So I'm going to do the work to make those things manifest. The work is giving it over to God. The work is then when you've given those things over to God, there's an empty place that's left inside of you. Once you remove something, there's now a space that needs to be filled. I'm speaking God in that place. I'm yes. speaking peace in that place. The work is calling on the name of Jesus. The work is crying until I'm dried out. The work is allowing God to fill those empty things in me with his spirit. I'm going to do the work. The work may be to close my eyes and just oh, the work is allowing God to move by his spirit. Amen. So that third thing is work. So we've uncovered it. We've uncovered our pain. We've acknowledged our pain. We've confronted our pain. We've made a decision that that pain is no longer going to keep me bound. Amen. That pain is no longer going to hold me hostage. Amen. And then that third thing, we've decided to do the work. We're praying. We're fasting. We're seeking God. We're reading his word. We're coming into a new day. All things new. We're speaking and declaring that thing over our lives. We're letting the enemy know that he is no longer in charge of my feelings, of my emotions, of my intention. He is no longer in charge of how I respond to people who've hurt me. I'm giving it over to God. Amen. I'm giving it over to God. He has no place. I'm speaking and declaring the power of life and death is in your tongue. So if we're speaking and declaring that thing over our feelings, over our hearts, it has to manifest. Amen. That's the work. We're going to continue to do the work. Amen. The fourth thing is deepening, deepening, manifesting the release of the negative feelings and emotions. Now we are able to draw a meaning for the sufferings that we've endured. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So now we can see that thing that was meant to pull us out of our victory, was meant to take us out, was meant to kill us. Now we can see that thing as something that pushed us into our purpose. No longer are we seeing that thing as a burden. No longer are we seeing that thing as something that was meant to kill me. No longer are we seeing that thing as something that was meant to pull me away from God. But now we see that thing as something that draw me closer to him. Now we see that thing as my testimony. Now we see that thing as something that I can share with the people of God to help them come through. Now we see that thing as a manifest 
manifestation of our peace, of our love. Now we see that thing as a manifestation of restoration in our marriages, in our hearts, in our homes, in our families. We are taking back everything that the enemy has tried to take and destroy. We are making those bad things good. We are making those crazy things sane. We are now taking back everything that the enemy tried to use to destroy us. Amen. 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 I'm excited about what God is doing because it is a new thing. All things are made new. If we're focused on the things of old, life is going to pass us by and we're going to be stuck in that same place. God wants to do a new thing in all of us. I have another scripture. I'm trying to find where I wrote it down. <laughs> it was Philippians 3. I'm going to read this one. I really like this one. Let me pull it up. So Philippians 3, and that's verse 18 and 19. And I'm going to read uh, from the New Living Translation. Uh -huh. Let me make sure I got the right one. Pray for me, y'all. Y'all praying? You good. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So Philippians, I'm going to start at uh, verse 13. It says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling. Amen. I'm not focused on the things of the past. I'm not focused on the things that have hurt me in the past. I am focused on the things of God and what lies ahead. He says there is a race and to receive my heavenly prize that God has promised me, I have to focus on what's ahead. So I'm not focused on the past. The past means nothing to me. All the past did was push me into my purpose. Amen. All the past did was set me up for my blessing. Amen. I'm going to read another one. The rest of that. And this, this scripture kind of freed me up. Um, we have looked at the people that have hurt us and tried to figure out why. You know, we've, we've asked the question, what did I do to deserve it? You know, what did I do to you? Why, why was this something that you would do to me? You know, we, we, we don't understand how people that we've loved, people that we've dedicated our lives to and been loyal to, why they could hurt us in, in such ways. You know, husbands and wives hurt each other all the time. You know, friends stab you in the back. People on your job lie about you. We ask why. Sometimes, you know, we lay in bed like this happened, you know, and, and, and why? Haven't I been good enough? Wasn't I a good friend? Wasn't I a good wife? Wasn't I a good yeah. husband? We ask the question why. And I read this scripture and it helped me to understand that some people, they don't know any better. So it says, for I have told you often before, and I say it again. Oh, and this is, I'm sorry, this is Philippians 3, verse 18. He says, for I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross. The cross of Christ. He says, they are headed for destruction. What made me think, why am I giving so much energy to somebody who's headed for destruction? My God. Why am I allowing someone who's headed for destruction to rob me of my peace? Why am I allowing someone who is headed for destruction to speak things over me that they have no authority to speak? Why am I allowing someone who has who's headed for destruction to have any say in anything in my life? God said, consider the source. He says some of them, some of them are, are just serving a purpose. And that was to push you into your destiny. 
said some of them, they, they weren't meant to be there forever, but meant to be there for a season. And sometimes God has allowed things to happen in our lives because he wants to push us to a place in him. He wants to make sure we get there. And sometimes he has to give us that extra push. But uh -huh. we're no longer giving authority to people who have no authority over us. There's one person, my husband and Jesus Christ himself. Other than that, no one has the authority to, to speak anything over my life or cause me to be um, bound or, or any. I'm not giving that kind of energy to nobody. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. So be freed up. Because those people who hurt you, they were either there to push you into your destiny or they were hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. My husband and I they often hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so how can we, we not show compassion? And this is the other side of forgiveness. Sometimes it's not because people wanted to maliciously hurt you. Sometimes it's not because they wanted to really do you bad. But sometimes they just didn't know any better. Uh -huh. and this uh -huh. will allow us, knowing this will allow us to manifest compassion. Some some mothers didn't know how to be a mother because they didn't have a mother. My God. Uh -huh. Husband didn't know how to be a husband because he didn't have the example of a husband in his life. So understanding these things will help to, us to free up people and be able to show compassion on those because compassion is what God showed us. Amen. Amen. Compassion is what God showed us. That's why he died on the cross because he knew we, we was going to mess up all day, every day, continually messing up, but he uh -huh. showed compassion on us. So forgiveness also opens the door to be able to show compassion to others. So I thank God. I thank God that in me, he is doing a new thing. All things are new. We are walking in the newness of God and we are not turning back. I thank God for every family, every uh, woman, every man, boy and girl that is represented on this live tonight. I think that everyone is here for a reason because somebody has dealt with unforgiveness and somebody needed to hear that it is OK to forgive. Somebody needed to hear that you can walk in forgiveness and still show your strength. You don't have to be weak. You're not weak. It is strength. It is strength that you are exhibiting when you can show forgiveness. You may never get to talk to that person that hurt you. When Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He did not come down from the cross and go to an individual person and say, I forgive you. And the father forgives you. And the father forgives you. But he closed his eyes. I can see him close his eyes, lifted up his head to his father. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So in your late midnight hour, in your bed, lift up your eyes and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You might be saying, I'm not a prophet. You might be saying, I'm not anointed. The devil is a liar. Ah, if yeah. you are anointed to sweep a floor, you're anointed to do it. If you're anointed to say amen and strengthen and, and encourage the men and women of God, you're anointed to do it. If God has called you to be a mother, you're anointed to do it. If God has called you to be the best janitor in the world, you're anointed to do it. So if the world says, if the word says, touch my, not my anointing and do my prophets no harm, that covers you too. It doesn't matter if you're behind the pulpit. It doesn't matter if you have a mic in your hand. He said, touch not my anointed. And so just show compassion to those who have hurt you because they didn't know. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know. They had no idea, but they were serving a purpose. Even Judas had a purpose. Jesus oh. knew exactly <laughs> who he was when yeah. he chose him. Judas was uh, over the money. I read um, in the scriptures, it, it, it didn't give a lot of information about his history, but it said that he was in charge of the money. So ironically, Judas was in charge of the money, but Jesus called him in to be a disciple. It was money that convinced him to betray Jesus, right? But it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about, you know, the betrayal. It was about that pushing Jesus into his purpose. So he came 
and betrayed God with a kiss. How many people been betrayed with a kiss? He betrayed Jesus with a kiss over some money. Not worth it, but worth it because we were redeemed because of it. So Jesus, Judas had a purpose. Some of those people in your life, all the ones who've done you wrong, they had a purpose. They had a purpose. So I'm thanking God for Judas. I thank God for Judas. Why? Because he pushed Jesus to the cross. He pushed Jesus to his purpose. And his purpose was to redeem me. His purpose was to redeem you. His purpose was to go to God and ask God to forgive us for our sins. So thank God for the Judases in your life because they are pushing you to your purpose. The pain that was set to take you out was pushing you to your purpose. So I thank God on tonight. I thank God that if you are on this live, that some pain that you've experienced is pushing you to your purpose. So we are going to take those things and those investments into who we are in Christ. And we're going to reap the benefits on tonight. We're going to reap the gladness of, of God. We're going to reap the joy, the peace, we're going to reap all those things that God has designed for us to, to endure or to, to benefit from his goodness, his gladness, his peace, his mercy. We're thanking God for those things. We're thanking God for the Judases. And there probably will be some more. Pain ain't going to stop here. Because you forgave today doesn't mean pain ain't going to come back tomorrow. Come on. We're the process. We're going to continue to work this process. Those steps said to work. The work doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because you said I forgive. It's going to continue because you said I forgive. We're going to continue to work that thing. Amen. Thank God for the Judas. I thank God for the Judas for pushing me into my purpose. I thank God for the pain because it pushed me into my purpose. We can't have a testimony without a test. So I thank God for the pain because it pushed me into my purpose. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful on tonight. This blessed me because I had to check myself. I thought I had been a lot further along than I was. But when I saw this, this topic that Lady Felicia sent to me, you know, I've heard my husband say that when a preacher preaches, they are the first partakers of that word. Oh, yeah. so on tonight, um, throughout this week, you know, I've I've been reading and I've been praying. I've been asking God, you know, first, my husband said I'm the first partake. I, so I let me partake. <laughs> so let me check myself. Is there any areas of unforgiveness in my life? And he showed me some things that I wasn't prepared for. Mm. There's some situations that I've gone through and I've told myself that I have forgiven. But then I asked myself if this person was standing in front of me, how would I receive them? Mm -hmm. And my first thought was, no, I wouldn't. If they was on fire, I wouldn't spit on them. <laughs> Come on. I check I'm just being honest. I yeah. had to check it. Mm -hmm. I thank God for this word because it freed me up. It freed me up. And it reminded me that forgiveness is not a, a one-stop shop. It's a continual, continual work. And as long as we work it, God got our back. And we're going to continue to work that thing and allow our pain to push us to our purpose. Amen. 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 <laughs> Did you just drop the mic? I don't have. <laughs> I don't Come have the mic. You know, I'm excited. <laughs> when I say the fire, mm, the fire of God is all around you baby Amen. it's all over you i need you to just come forth and release you was releasing you was prophesied and god that's god said there's so much more on you no more will you underestimate yourself Amen. no more will you second guess yourself in the name of jesus there is an anointing even a prize to set the people free because you were so authentic and original, but you gave the word of God. We can't live without the word of God. You just release that thing that thought they had you bound. That was a release. You know, you gave birth to them natural babies, but now in the spirit, oh baby, you just push. You just push that baby out full term, 
full term, full term. And now it's about to grow. It's about to be nurtured. It's about to eat some good, good, good fruit. God has already established you in good places, in great places. This word, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. All I can say is you said, now we see you see the new thing you see the new thing now you see your baby that done came for you was trying to hold it but she said it's time to come out it's time to come out and so when you get matter of fact you was pushing the other day it just wasn't time you was pushing the other day when we was on the line saying push saying push you was pushing the other day but today oh you had all these people in the chambers in the room in a hospital in the waiting area just to receive this pressure this gift, this jewel, this 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 magnificent, wonderful, well-groomed nature, whole nine months healthy baby that came forth, all in the spirit of forgiveness, forget it, forgetting all those things that tried to hold me back, forgetting all those things that those people said about me, how they mishandled me, how they mistreated me. Now you don't forgave and you don't forgot. You don't forgave and God I erased it from your memory. And now you're ready to uh, nurture this baby so she can grow. What you got on assassinated? You came and you took it out. You took every negative word. You even put out, you put out them, you put out those contaminated doctors and nurses and the midwives that was trying to touch you, that was trying to come over you. You already assassinated them. You cut them, you killed them, you killed them tonight, baby. I just want to say, woo, Reba, I'm asking, God is doing, he has done, he has done, he has done a new thing. Those that say you couldn't forgive them and start to minister to them from a heart space, a heart space, a yes, heart yes. space of love, start to minister them with the love of Christ, no matter what. You continue to burn for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there is a fresh, a fresh, fresh when i say a fresh yeah i know you got your husband in there but that's a fresh anointing that is on you that you will be able to even prophesy over your husband when he goes forth yeah you won't be able to see and you won't be able to take those enemies out those witches that may even try to come in they try to come in they cause chaos or confusion you gonna be such a sharp shooter i see you just shooting the arrow i see you just shooting the arrow and i even see even out your mouth you just waving the sword you just waving the sword and that's the word you killing them with the word you assassinating them with the word of God. There is so much in you. There is so much in you. God is just lifting you up, raising you up. What you say? Out of that comfortable place. Out of that comfortable place. No more will you be comfortable, but you will be keep moving in everything that God has for you. Even if it's painful, you know it's a purpose. And you know even if it's painful, you already know something beautiful is going to come out of it. So I thank God for using you this night, tonight, y'all. Come on. Let's thank God for using thank this God. woman of God tonight. Strong people, strong people, strong people got to forgive. The weak cannot forgive. That's what she said. The weak can't forgive. The weak can't forgive. The weak cannot forgive. We don't have no weak people. I need you to type on this line. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm strong in Christ. I'm strong in Christ. She gave you some pointers. I'm trying to say, she said, uncover, 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 confront the pain, confront the pain, confront it. No, you hurt me, but I want to forgive. Confront it, yes. confront the pain, yes. making a decision. You got to make a decision. Make a decision. You either gonna get with this or you can get with that. You either gonna get with this or you can get with that. That's it. Make make the decision. Make the decision. And once you make the decision, you gotta put the work in it, right? Put the work yes. in it. Yes, Lord. Put work the it. work in it. What she say? I heard her say, faith without works are dead. Faith without works are dead. Faith without works are dead. So you gotta put the work in, and then you gotta go deep manifesting the release you gotta go deep 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 
deep deep i need y'all to hear what the woman of god said you need to go deep deep manifesting the release what release release and let it go release and let it go what, what scripture was it romans 8 28 all things work together for those who love the lord you say you love the lord release it and let it go release it and let it go my god this was a word i don't need we don't even had to be on here long because she she even came, you came on here even prophesying maybe you was prophesying that it is finished it is over the week cannot the weak cannot handle forgiveness so what they hurt you yeah so what they oh, hurt yeah. you so mm -hmm. what then you hear her she had to forgive those when she was young molested mishandled misused talked about her betrayed her she had to forgive you gotta make sure you in the right position the right posture to forgive the woman of god came forth tonight with power mm -hmm. with anointing mm -hmm. none of her but all of god not just that with the word she ain't just come in yeah. talking about so they about no nah. she came in with the word english 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 so you can understand it and go look for yourself go everything mm -hmm. she said she backed it up with scripture so in that note in that note there is no failure there is no failure mm -hmm. you have been released tonight from every bit of insecurity what she said you have been disconnected tonight from ungodly soul ties you have been disconnected from anger from hurt resentment revenge retaliation you have been disconnected from unforgiveness tonight you have been disconnected from bitterness in the mighty name of jesus listen you have have been disconnected from people that hurt you that disappointed you you have been disconnected from people that abandoned you you have been disconnected from people that mistreated you you have been disconnected from the spirit of rejection in the name of jesus father we thank you for giving us this time and operating to operate from our fear to activate our faith tonight in the mighty name of jesus we yes, cast God. out every spirit of unbelief every spirit of yes, doubt and security in the mighty name of jesus yes, oh God. father we thank you that tonight yes, we disconnected all selfishness all self-will all self-pity all self-rejection all self-hatred in the mighty name of jesus father forgive you, us jesus. for not forgiving ourselves in the mighty name Hallelujah. of jesus so we thank you and we bless you god if we thank you and we honor you for what took place on this line tonight now i declare and decree that there is a fresh wind a fresh anointing in mm. your house tonight yes, again yes. we come against any torment and yes, spirits any yes. restless night you will rest yes, in yes, peace yes, point yes, that yes, god yes, has yes. already sent his angels that your door is already covered with the blood stained banner nothing illegal will even enter in or try to come in again in your dreams no illegal hands any witch or warlock that even had your name at the altar has already been burned up with the fire and the yes, holy yes. ghost in the mighty name of jesus. jesus so nothing yes, will come in i declare in the decree nothing will come in to steal your joy yes, or your tonight in the mighty name yes, of jesus, jesus. There is a fresh rub. I feel a fresh wind. Hallelujah. A fresh wind in your house, yes, Betty. That is a fresh wind and a fresh anointing flowing your way. All you got to do just receive it. What she said, receive it. Open your arms. Open your mouth. Give God some praise for the forgiveness. Oh, they forget. They did me wrong, but I forgive them. And now I'm ready for my new. I'm walking into my new. I'm receiving the fresh anointing, the fresh wind the fresh deal the fresh excitement that has been coming my way it's been a long time waiting but since she gave me these steps on forgive father forgive me for not forgiving myself father forgive me for not forgiving those who mishandled me and mistreated me but father forgive
forgive them that mishandled me and mistreated me in the name of Jesus. So we thank you and we love you. It's in your wonderful name. We close this out. Do we have a safe house on this line tonight? Is there one? Is there one that's struggling with forgiveness tonight? Unforgiveness. Is there one tonight that say, I don't know how to forgive, but I want to forgive. All you got to do, just open your mouth and ask God to give you a heart. Fix your heart. A heart transfusion. A heart transfusion. A heart transfusion. You need a heart transfusion. And once you get a heart transfusion, your mind will start to regulate. Your mind will start to regulate. And you will even forget what she said. I remember this what she said. She said, you can forgive. That don't mean you got hang. Y'all know I said that. You can forgive, but I don't got fellowship with you. I don't have the fellowship. I can forgive you. I don't have the fellowship with you. I can forgive you and never think about what you said to you. But she said, if God say do it, if God tell her to pray for you, if God tell her to prophesy to you, no matter what you did, no matter how you did, no matter how you mishandled or mistreated us, we still got to do it. Have an ear to hear and a heart to love just like God. She reminded you how he was hanging on that cross. She said he didn't come down and say, oh, I forgive him and not him. Oh, I forgive him and not him. She reminded you how would God did Father forgive them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Forgive. So it has all been forgiven. It has all been forgiven. It has all been forgiven. This was awesome. You could not tell that this was your first time, but you already know how we rock and roll. Cutie on duty. Pretty girl rock. You already know how we do it. This is not the first time. <laughs> not the last. I'm just showing y'all my whole team. We coming to let the enemy know that God let us know it's our time. It is our time. Mm. It's our time. And if it's our time, y'all that's on this line, it's your time too. Amen. That's right. It's your time and it's your oh. time to yes. move forward, to come out and be and do everything that God has already said. We come to push you past your pain. We, You might not say it like we say. You might not pray like we pray. You might not uh, walk the way we walk. You might not dress the way we dress. Whatever you are, my, uh, my sister said today, be, um, be, 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 be secure in the grace that God has for you. Be confident. Be confident in the time and the grace that God has for you. Amen. 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 So Amen. we love you all. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Is there anybody on here that is having a problem with forgiveness? <clears throat> Nobody. Oh, yes. Y'all, I'm 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 super excited. I'm excited for this woman of God. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. So listen, y'all. Jump on tomorrow. Jump on tomorrow at 10. Yeah, I said we was only gonna be on here for an hour. Jump on tomorrow at 10. It's gonna be a powerful woman of God. That's right, Victoria. Not after this. Amen. Not after this. Amen. 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 See, let me tell you something. I, if she only got one person, I'm not saying she's not the only, but one person came came forth and let her know that God is still in the healing business. I needed you at this time. He needed, they needed to hear your voice because somebody was struggling with something and they thought they couldn't forgive. They couldn't get over. But because you opened your mouth and because you said yes, they got a breakthrough. They got some deliverance. They got a peace of mind because you came forth. Because you allowed God to use you. You came against the spirit of fear. And for that, we say thank you. Thank we you, Lord. No, I get excited. Hallelujah. I get excited, I get excited when excited. I see my friends, my circle going up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Amen. Amen. Um, what's your name, Rashida? 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 Rashida William. Struggling with forgiveness. You struggling with forgiveness? Just say I am. If, if that's you. That's you, Rashida. Unmute yourself, Sonia. <clears throat> Rashida. Yes. Come on. She's struggling with forgiveness. Let's go. You want me to pray for her? 
Come on. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come to lift Rashida up to you, O oh God, praying that you will help her, O oh God, to forgive those that have wronged her, those that have mishandled her, that those that have misappropriated her. In the name of Jesus, help her to change her heart posture, God, knowing that once she forgives, it liberates her, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray also for healing, healing in her subconscious is healing of disappointment, healing of hurt, healing of torment right now in the name of Jesus. God, help us to release it and let it go, God, in the name of Jesus. We know that it's not always easy, God, but you said that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So help us to tap into your strength, oh God, at this time. I pray, oh God, that it, sh it would be loose far from her, God, and that self-control love and peace will be bound to her in the name of yes. Jesus. Do what only you can do for your daughter, God, for you know her by name. You know her by name, God, and you know her so well that you even know every hair that's on her head. So love on your daughter, oh God, and give her the strength that she needs to forgive and forgive wholly and totally in the name of Jesus. And Satan, we serve you notice that you can't have her peace in the name of Jesus. You thought she was going to trip her up, but she came into the room tonight and for that, God, give her the liberty that she desires in the name of Jesus. We love you, we honor you, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 You got something to say to a lady, C? So I, I I heard the Lord saying, um, what was her name? Rashia, Rashia, was mm -hmm. that her name, Miss Rashia? Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord saying, daughter, you're struggling with forgiving others because you don't feel that you're worthy of forgiveness yourself. So He's saying, there's nothing you have to do to earn my forgiveness. It's freely given. Mm -hmm. As free as I've given forgiveness to you, all you have to do is just purpose in your heart to forgive those who've hurt you. He said, it's as simple as that. Just make a decision and, and allow him to start the work in you. He said, but you don't have to earn his forgiveness. It's done. It's given. So when you realize that you're worthy of forgiveness, you'll realize that you can give forgiveness as well. It's going to happen, sis. It's going to come. It's going to manifest. But it does take time. It is a process. It's not a microwave thing. It's not going to happen overnight. So just allow God to work that process. But the first thing you do is make it an act of your will to say, Lord, I forgive. Lord, my desire is to have a forgiving heart. And he will take that confession and he will take that declaration and begin the work in you. Amen. Amen. It's coming, sis. It's coming. Y'all, y'all hear prophetess lady C. Y'all hear prophetess lady C. Up on here prophesying. You received it. If you receive it, right? She say, I hope we saying your name right. I hope we saying your name right. Um, yes, you receive it, mighty woman of God. Amen. 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 Yes, and I, I, I just want to piggyback on what she said. It is all about forgiving yourself. Yes. Forgiving yourself. I heard the Lord say, daughter, I have forgiven, so you need to forgive. Forgive yourself. Yes. Free yourself from everything that tried to hold you bound. Free yourself for the curse words you even spoken over yourself. Forgive yourself and then you will learn to forgive others. You got to forgive yourself for being mad at yourself because yeah. I see you just being mad like, oh my God, I'm so dumb. This is so stupid. Why did I do it this way? No. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. No, you don't you ain't carrying no shame, no. no shame, no guilt, carrying shame, forgiving your son as a father. No, none of that. Listen, 
that's done it all it was a purpose behind it that's all you gotta know and mm -hmm. i'm a firm believer that god will show me something good in every situation that looks bad to somebody because that's what kind of god he is there is a purpose for whatever happened there is a purpose so forgive yourself look it's over it's done but where do we go from here yeah so you yeah. you <laughs> ask god and i hear the lord saying when she comes to me and totally rely on me i'm going to give her the instructions on how to move and maneuver like it's real easy it's going to be so easy it's going to be so y'all know i'm i'm serious i'm in this room but it's it's going to be so easy you know that song it is so easy it is so easy it's going to be so easy you ain't even going to know and then it's going to happen quick just get in his presence and his posture first of all are you saved let me know if you are saved yeah. if you are saved if you are saved because this was a strong powerful word on forgiveness because we can do this day after day over and over and then sometimes yeah. the enemy will allow us you heard it like lady say go back to that place where we say i forgave him but as soon as we see because oh I, I, yeah she is oh baby so you yeah. know it's already forgiven yeah, i just want to remind it. you it yeah. is you have been um dip in new old things are passed away it's new it is forgiven don't yeah. pick it back up it's already up on a cross yes it's on a cross for you it's on a cross we just come to remind you that's all we just come to remind you that what your father took on a cross for you so don't let nothing no negative words or thoughts negative people i even hear god say now you're going to have to change your conversation in your circle mm -hmm. you're going to have to change your conversation in your circle as mm -hmm. they can either get with it or they don't they either gonna flow or they gonna go that's it that's it that's it you're gonna walk into your newness i am dealing with well, situation where my kid's father, who's absent, who absent and trying to get custody of my kids out of revenge. Listen, you trust God. That's all I'm gonna say. If you trust God, trust God, trust God in every process. I I told you, I heard God say, when she comes to me, I am going to give her the instructions. I didn't know what she was dealing with, but when you go to God, go to God, go to. People can't give it to you. This is what yeah. he's saying. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. That's what I heard him. Before you even put that up, he got everything you need. He has everything you need. Go to God. If you go to people, <laughs> one person going to tell you this, one person going to tell you that. Trust God. Get to know his voice. If you haven't heard him before, you need to know his voice. And a stranger do not follow. For the next seven days, time. I'm, I'm so great. You need to block out. Block out every voice, but just hear the voice of God. You need to lay before him. You need to pray every hour on the hour. These are the instructions God is telling me to give to you every hour on an hour and you know what that's gonna do that's gonna be a time you're gonna have to get up out of your bed oh it's one o'clock every hour on an hour for the next 24 mm -hmm. hours every hour on an hour for the next 24 hours starting at 12 o'clock get up and just start to pray and start to pray you don't have to pray for an hour but you gotta seek god you gotta go after god this this is a scripture you gotta do first thessalonians 5 and 17. you gotta pray without ceasing baby you gotta pray without ceasing you gotta give it to him and even when lady c was talking earlier he gonna show you some things about yourself that you ain't gonna like but guess what that's gonna be your release you want if you want it it can come together where it won't be no division it won't cause confusion with even the children god is the judges of all judges he is the lawyer and the courtroom mm -hmm listen every hour on an hour I'm, I'm telling you uh trust me 
every hour on an hour. I ain't saying you got to pray for a whole hour. That's not what he says to me. He said, tell her to get her every hour on an hour, starting at 12 o'clock tonight for 24 hours. Every hour on the hour. If you at work or something like that, hold up. You got to take a break. Go to the bathroom. When it's strike one o'clock, when it's strike two o'clock, you got to pray. I don't care if it's two minutes, three minutes, whatever it is. Every hour on the hour. And then for the next seven days, you need to lay before the Lord. You need to lay before the Lord and seek direction and instructions and hear his voice. Block out every everything, every negative person. And this is, listen. This is something, and I know it's on live, but this is something that has to be between you and God. So that means you don't have to bring nobody in it. These are the instructions. I can go a little bit deeper, but this is something that you have to do between you and God for the next seven days. Mm -hmm. And right now, even as we're on a live, God, we disconnect. We cover her with the blood of Jesus from yes, any Lord. illegal mm -hmm. spirits, any witch, any demon that will even yes, try Lord. to come in and try to sabotage or dismantle this prayer mm -hmm. that was speaking forth over this woman of God. We send it back to the abyss where it belongs. We disconnect her right now from any illegal soul yes, ties. Oh God, activate her faith in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, God, God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will have your way in this woman of God. Cover her, her children in the mighty name of Jesus with the blood stained banner. We yes, come God. against everything that will try to cause chaos and confusion in her mind. Holy yes, Ghost, fire, oh Holy yes, Ghost, fire burn to ashes. Every demonic hindrance in her life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, let that answer by fire be the God in every situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way. Let every demonic delay in her life die right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, we thank you right now that any enemy that has done wrong to her, that has her name at the altar, burning up with the fire and the Hallelujah. anointing of the Holy Ghost. And so, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. We thank you thank right you. now that every witchcraft problem that was trying to come up in her life, that was trying to set her up to die, is dead now in the mighty in name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Oh God, every evil power that had that, that she made a vow to, let it be wasted right now in the yeah, mighty yeah. name of Jesus. God, yeah. every illegal soul tie that she came connected to, break yeah. it up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Father, Jesus. we thank you right now for your deliverance. Oh, Father, we thank you that you're delivering her from our, every stronghold that thought it had her whole hell hostage in her mind tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, the yes. angels of the living God work day and night on Hallelujah. her behalf to deliver yes. her to manifest. In the yes. mighty name of Jesus, oh God, thank we you. thank you and we bless you in your wonderful name, oh God, we love you, Jesus. We love you and we love you and we love you. Have your way, God. Have your way. Yes. We thank you. We thank you. We thank, thank you. We thank you. Jesus. We thank you for the new thing. We yes. thank you for the new thing. We <laughs> thank you for the new thing. I got to get off of here. We thank you for the new thing. New, new, new. Jump on tomorrow. Jump on tomorrow. Just a <laughs> reminder, if you didn't watch it yesterday, go back and watch the replay yesterday. She did, she did on trust. How to trust God. How to trust God. She did a live on trust. So go back. It's on my page from yesterday. Trust. The first day was released. And now the day is forgiveness. Oh, baby, I'm telling you, you're going to be bouncing. They're going to look at you and say, who she thinks she is? Oh, I'm a daughter of the king. I'm the daughter of the king. I am favored. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am more than a conqueror. That's who you are. That's who you are. I love you all. Peace and shalom.